Thank you, Madam Chairman. I rise in support of H.R. 2117. Today's debate on the Protecting Academic Freedom and Higher Education Act affords us a valuable opportunity to discuss challenges facing our higher education system. And I think that we all agree that we have a higher education system that's the envy of the world, and we all want to see it continue to enjoy the uh, recognition that it enjoys now. But this also provides us an opportunity to show bipartisan support for the issue before us. I want to thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for understanding the danger to the higher education community that the regulations uh, of, are presenting to us and that they uh, will stall the efforts in our country to make higher education more accessible and more affordable to everyone in the country. There's no denying the cost of college is skyrocketing. Last year, tuition and fees at public four-year colleges and universities increased 8.3%, even as inflation rose by only approximately 3%. In recent months, students and families have urged Congress to take action on the issue of rising college costs. The administration has proposed several programs and initiatives that they claim will reduce student loan debt and rein in tuition. However, these initiatives only further entrench the federal government in the affairs of states and institutions. Rather than getting the federal government more involved in higher education, we can start by working together to remove harmful regulations that pile unnecessary financial burdens on colleges and universities. The legislation before us today will eliminate two onerous regulations advanced by the Department of Education in October of 2010. The credit hour and state authorization regulations will restrict innovation, limit flexibility, and pave the way for additional federal overreach into higher education. The state authorization regulation sets federal requirements states must follow to grant colleges and universities permission to operate within the state, infringing on a state's ability to regulate in the way it chooses. For institutions that offer distance learning courses, this could mean meeting authorization requirements and paying authorization fees in all 50 states. One online university reports the state authorization regulation could cost the institution $700,000 initially, plus an additional $400,000 required annually. Faced with this astronomical sum, the university could be forced to pass these costs along to students in the form of higher tuition or new fees, or discontinue academic programs in some states. Either way, students will be the victims of this harmful regulation. Higher education officials are also crying foul over a regulation that establishes a federal definition of a credit hour. Last spring, Excelsior College President John Ebersole testified to the Subcommittee on Higher Education Workforce Training about this regulation, stating it inserts the Department of Education into academic judgments that should be made at the institution level and could destroy accelerated learning programs that allow students to complete their education more quickly. As a result, students will have fewer opportunities to graduate early with a smaller loan burden, and schools will have less incentive to offer creative courses that promote learning outside the classroom. I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to continue to support this positive legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlelady 